Hey comic book fans, I'm Wild Bill, the Unknown Comic. We're, welcome back to another episode of Comic Book Geezers. We've got Pete Park over here. We're going to do inside the cover with another Erie Magazine from Pete's Hall. What number issue is Number this? 49. Hi folks, what's going on? <laughs> hope everybody had a, uh, it is now uh, after Turkey Day here in the States. So I hope everybody yes. is, uh, you know, has their belly full and they're looking to do something else today, right? This yeah, is relax. Like the day after hopefully, relax. Hopefully yes. you got the day off. Yeah, I got the day off. I got today is go by Christmas tree day. That's like the tradition in the Pardo house. Day after Thanksgiving, boom, got to go pick out the tree with the family, bring it home and decorate it. So that's the rest of my day we'll be doing that. All so, right. Yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, this is this is a really, really cool issue of Erie. This is number 49. It's from 1973. Uh, I like all of these, the Erie and the Creepy and then the Vampire and all the Warren magazines. But sometimes you get one of them. That every single story is just basically like a home run. That's this one. So, okay. Uh, first of all, you got the. So, what does this what does this creature on the cover remind you of, Bill? King Kong. No, look carefully. Swamp Thing. There you go. Boom. Or Man Thing. Yeah. Well, maybe a little bit of both, right? So this is seventy three. So Swamp Thing is already a character. Man Thing is already a character yeah, that's too. Right. Both. So uh, so here, but remember, these are short stories. So. And, and it tells you right at, the, right at the top, featuring the mummy, the wolfman, and the dead thing. The dead thing. That's the dead thing. Right? He's the dead thing? Yes. Okay. So, uh, and we've got a little uh, Dracula thing on the inside cover. It's kind of neat. So here we've got a whole bunch of stories. Uh, let's see. Uh, cover was done by Enric. I don't know who that is. Uh, this issue, the artist, uh, Jamie Brokaw, Rich Buckler, boom, Bill DeBay, Esteban Moroto, Munez, and Paul Neary, and writers Richard Margopoulos, Esteban Moroto, Al Milgram, and Steve Skeets. So after a, uh, you know, get the, obviously the readers, letters. letters and whatnot. So the first story, which is the leadoff story, basically tells the story of this guy, the this very thing. lonely guy, yes, the dead thing. <laughs> Uh, they, when he's a kid, when he's a teenager, when he's an adult, he's basically one of those dudes that's just ignored, lives a lonely life, has no friends. Everybody always kind of looks at him like, ah, you know, what's up with the weird dude who doesn't talk to anybody type of thing. So at one point, he is an older dude, and he's so... Yes. <laughs> Guy we went to college with, and he knew growing up... Uh, was basically this dude. I don't want to slander. No. That's why I whispered. Yeah, basically that dude. <laughs> so basically... Inside joke. <clears throat> okay. So he's so kind of lonely and depressed. What does he decide to do? He jumps off a bridge into the river. And he dies. But then what he fails to realize is there's all this kind of like... Uh, uh, reacting with the river waters resulting in the most unusual development mineral uh, waste materials being pumped in from the river from nearby factories toxic waste. toxic waste one week past two then and he is reborn again so there as we sludge have monster. as sludge monster or dead thing dead, whatever you want to dead, call it dead monster Marvin the dead thing oh really that's what he's called so there is one is the loneliest number, which of course everybody knows is a popular song back at the time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So again, this particular story uh, by Al Milgram and art by Esteban Morato. So basically, he's now this kind of like man thing, swamp thing, toxic Avenger kind of creature, and he's just to him because he can't see himself. He just thinks, oh, I, everything's normal. Uh, what happened? I fell into the I fell into the river. I'm okay. He I got He didn't know he, he melted. No, I'm, I'm going to be late for work. I got to get going. So he's basically. <laughs> what is this? I'm a fleshy headed mutant. Now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So he makes off. He's like, I got to get to work. So he goes back to town. He walks out of the water, walks into the street. People are running away from him <laughs> screaming. He's like, what's up with all these people, right? He walks into his old office. Everybody's like, holy cow, what's going on? So, of course, what they do, they call... I catch up on my paperwork. Exactly, right? So they call the cops. The cops show up. Start shooting at him. And they start shooting at him, right? Really? So what does he do? He retaliates. <laughs> and, and he, uh, you know, starts throwing the, the the cop cars around. He starts throwing a monster fit. Exactly. <laughs> so he realized. Then you know, he looks. He sees himself, and he's like, "Oh my god, what happened All to me?" Right. He goes back to the river, goes back out into the into the far into the. It's almost like the Everglades or the the woodlands, whatever. And what does he do? He meets up with a young girl. And so then, now it's almost like damsel in Frankenstein mod, the original Frankenstein. Beauty film, comes right? a savage beast. Exactly. So she sees him. She's not afraid of him, and she starts talking to him. He realizes he's trying to communicate with her, but he can't talk because he's now he has no real mouth anymore. So the two of them spark up a friendship. They're frolicking around the woods, having a grand old time. And for him, this is like the first time in his life he's had a friend. So she goes home. She comes back the next day. What does she do? She's so excited about her new friend. She brings her father with her. 
The father sees this beast and he's like, oh my God, grabs his daughter, comes back with the townspeople. They start chasing uh, our, our poor soul here, right? And they trap him in a corner. They're going to go try and kill him. And what happens? The little girl goes, goes to save him. To like, save him. Like Don't hurt my shield. friend. Yeah. And she gets shot. She gets shot. So now he's all upset. So basically that last picture down here basically mirrors the, the cover, right? So yeah. There you go. So now Mirrors he Frankenstein drowning the little girl in the movie. Exactly. So he is so upset. So basically what does he do? And this is the weird thing. So the girl gets shot. The townspeople disappear. Does the father not even know that they shot his little girl, and they just, they, or did they think that they just shot the creature and then didn't even bother go to check? So he just grabs the dead girl, starts walking away, and he figures, well, maybe after what happened to me, you know, I was dead, I came back, maybe the same thing can, can happen to my friend. So what does he do? In typical Frankenstein fashion, he walks over to the edge of the river, throws, throws her dead body into the water, and waits and waits and waits and, and then she gets washed away and then the eventually current. he just sits there and waits and then eventually however Nothing. long it was something comes up out of the water a loaf of bread no <laughs> <laughs> well, no basically a female version of him the little girl has indeed turned into a similar type creature as him they get up become best friends and the rest of their life is just the two of them and people and they say something about uh, uh, Marvin knows what it means that he is no longer lonely and people often speak in hushed whispers of the two strange creatures in the woods near the river there's a superstition built up around them for people who don't quite know what their presence means but to them they just want to be left alone in their friendship and they go about their lives together in the swamp in the swamp so wow there's that. That's so crazy next story which is uh, written by Steve Skeets and art by Jamie Brokaw Let's visit the mummy again. Didn't, we, right. didn't we have the mummy in a, in a previous uh, episode, I think, so. I think? Yeah, well, we got another one. So here we Last have... This one looked like Karloff's mummy. Right, and this All one right. kind of looks like the Marvel mummy. Okay. Pretty much. So here we've got uh, the prologue. You see this chick and this guy all drunk after a bar, getting it on, whatever, all of a sudden coming crashing through the apartment. <laughs> Is a mummy, goes and grabs the dude, snaps his neck, right? Wow. And then turns to face her. There's some kind of, uh, he kind of knows who she is. He keeps looking at her like, I know you. Then all of a sudden she says, oh, you're Jerome, but, but, but. And we're probably thinking, who the hell is Jerome, right? And then what does he do? He strangles her, kills her, and leaves. So we're like, all right, what just happened here? So this You bastard. Yeah. So he's walking through town. People are like, what is that horrible smell? They look outside. There's this decade, smell of death. Smell of death. Fingers. Mommy. Yeah, exactly. So then... They cut to another scene, and apparently the brother of the woman who was just murdered by the mummy, he is trying to, he gets called to the scene, they're trying to figure out what happened to her and this guy she was, you know, hanging out with, whatever, and the cops, of course, question the brother, he doesn't know what's going on, he's like, you know, I, I didn't have anything to do with this, I don't know who this guy is, but, you know, my sister gets involved with all sorts of guys, whatever, yeah. so they're like, Looking right. for clues. Looking for clues, so then the guy goes back to a bar, and, uh... Actually, that wasn't his sister. That was his, uh, his a good friend of his. Then his sister shows up, right? So he's talking to the sister. And uh, he's getting drunk and whatnot. All of a sudden, he winds up meeting a woman at the bar. And he goes off with her. And then crashing through wherever they are <coughs> is the mummy. So the mummy's, mummy's coming after her. Mummy's oh. coming after her. Guessing. <coughs> and then he throws, the mummy throws uh, the dude uh, around. And then goes after the woman again. And then the woman goes, good God, you're Jerome, but... And he kills the woman. So meanwhile, the brother is thinking, again, like my sister, you know, I said something about Jerome. Who's this Jerome person, right? Jerome's so, the mommy. But then he remembers that Jerome okay. was actually the guy that just showed up with his sister in the previous page. Oh. And we didn't really say much. It said he just came from uh, from Egypt and whatnot, so he's putting two and two together. Is like, is the mummy Jerome, Jerome right? But we won't know because you'll have to wait till the next uh, installment, right? So basically he throws him out the window. He's laying outside. Is he dead? Is he not? I don't know. But the mummy is, is obviously going out to, he's got some kind of ulterior motive right here. But really cool artwork. The mummy looks great. He's big and strong and fierce. Yeah. So very, very cool. Next story. By Al Milgram, once again, art by Rich Buckler and Bill DeBay, Curse of the Werewolf. This is, again, another recurring character that I've seen in a couple of other of these uh, eerie magazines. So here in the beginning, and this is a continuation of another story, which I think we covered here, uh, where the father, kill, as the werewolf, kills his daughter. 
Remember that? That was a couple yeah. weeks ago. So then, you know, obviously it's daytime. He realized he killed his daughter. Uh, but, of course, he doesn't want to tell the cops that he did that. So they're trying to figure out well, who, killed the, uh, who killed the daughter. The wife is, like, all sorts of besides herself, the mother. But the husband realizes that he found out, he found a key in her possession that was the key to an apartment of another guy in town. So she's, oh. she's having an affair on him. So what does he do? He's really pissed off. So he knows that the dude that she's having an affair with is having this kind of council meeting. So he goes and shows up where the meeting is and he wants to beat the shit out of this guy that's messing around with his wife. So he goes. That doesn't start to turn out too well. And then the wife shows up to warn him but then realizes the husband's there. So this whole like yeah. love triangle thing is like coming unglued. But then, of course, the full moon. He turns into the werewolf, starts, you know, going after the dude. The yeah. dude escapes. He escapes. He escapes. He, he's got a, uh, a cane with a silver tip. He starts to hit the werewolf, but he doesn't finish him. The werewolf runs off. But then the werewolf goes and finds him, rips him apart, <laughs> and goes back out into the night. And uh, he goes, basically, I've got my revenge. He's... Uh, Revenge has been paid in full for the life of the small and innocent young girl. So basically, he is blaming the guy who he just killed on the death of his daughter, even though as the werewolf, he killed the daughter. So, But that story is also to be continued. Uh, the next story is called The Alienation Overpopulation. This is a weird, long story. I'm not going to get into this one. I really, This is the only one on this issue I really didn't care for all that much. But it's basically the story, uh, which kind of has a lot of things going on with like today about how like machines take over things, like the whole AI thing. Yeah. And here it's basically like uh, you know this new computer. You know, it's Check yourself out now at the store. Yeah, you know this new computer's created like that customer service. That's great, right? Yeah, apparently they're getting there. With their, there's a lot of movement to get rid of these uh, self checkout lines. Now. Really? So, yeah, I've been hearing a lot about it. Like Walmart and a lot of other uh, big uh, retail stores are, are getting lots of complaints about self checkout and how it's taken away from jobs, but it's really not that efficient because something's always happening. You got to call an attendant over any, anyway. The long story. I, I deviate, but basically this new computer that's Let's created. Let's talk about the pros. Some more about those machines. But when you pro- forget your change, and it's sticking out the bottom. Oh, the next person. Yeah, exactly. Woo-hoo! Get your money. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Well, most people would think that's not a pro, but... Uh. <laughs> Anyway, this new computer in this story thinks uh, it has come up with this whole thing. There's weight, the overpopulation on the Earth, so now it's it's putting in uh, all these laws that like you can only have one child and then all these other things. And now they're going to start doing this lottery where people will be uh, euthanized because we just have too many people on the Earth, right? Really? So then there's this whole uprising from people about you know this this one dude becomes like this revolutionary and then he's out to destroy the computer. And how do they really know there's too many people just because they say so? Does and make it true. Yeah, I don't know the census nonsense. Anyway, this is an okay story, but <laughs> census it's, nonsense. But it's just it's really long. It's not one of my favorites in here. But then you have this other cool story, which is about uh, an old man and his daughter. And these are about seventy pages. Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. For seventy-five cents. Yeah, what is yeah, this one? Was, Penny uh, a page back cents. then. Can't beat that, right? Story by Steve Skeets, art by Muniz, Fear Itself. And basically this old dude, his wife has died. He's kind of losing it a little bit, and he thinks they're people that are chasing after him. So he's here with his uh, his daughter, and, you know, he tells her, you know, they're, they're outside, they're coming to get me, call the cops. And she goes to call the cops, but she doesn't really call the cops because she thinks dad is a little nutty. So he she's goes berserk. Pretending. Yeah, so he finds out that she's just pretending. So he goes and he hits <laughs> her, and he leaves the house, right? So she's, like, knocked out unconscious. And then I think it's her boyfriend who shows up. And it's like, what happened? You know, whatever. Oh, dad is, phone call. dad is paranoid and he hasn't been the same since mom died and whatnot. So, like, we have to go out and find him because he left. He hit me and then he left. So then they go and then they, they follow the, the father and he's out at a bar and he's drinking and, like, he's, he's, oh, they're coming to get me. I saw them down the street and a couple people come in. He's like, they found me, right? Oh, so he's like, he, he, trying he, to tie one on, do you mind? He bolts from the bar, right? He runs down an alley. He, he turns back. He sees them Last following call. him. Turns out he's got a gun. So, what does he do? He opens fire on them. And then the Stay next back. page is who does he wind up killing? The daughter and the boyfriend. So he's totally seeing things, right? No. Totally seeing things. But uh, he keeps saying, they tricked me. I didn't want to kill her. Not her, but they tricked me. They tricked me. And then it turns out that he actually killed his wife, too, as well. So not only did he kill his wife, he killed his daughter, right? Because he's, he's just cuckoo. He's losing it. Cuckoo. And then uh, we got one more quick story. Lots of cool uh, ads, as always, in these issues. Lots of cool stuff. Amparella, plastic hobby kit, and 8mm projector, all sorts of stuff. Movies Wolf and things. Man. 
And then the last story, this is a quick one. So this is uh, Dax the Warrior. We've also seen, I've talked about Dax the Warrior stories before. Dax the Warrior and the Vampire. So basically Dax the Warrior is kind of like this Conan the Barbarian dude. Every story he's just kind of going somewhere else and comes across some kind of monstrosity or whatever. So here he comes across this uh, giant castle. He goes inside. There's not much going on there except he sees this beautiful young lady who's sleeping on a bed of skeletons. And he's like, why is she in this decrepit old place or whatever? And then... Probably a vampire. She's probably a vampire. You were absolutely correct, Bill. And then, uh, so she wakes up. She starts talking to him. She tries to seduce him. She goes to... They go to embrace because, of course, he's like all turned on by her but doesn't she's understand why she's there. Neck. She's going for his neck. But then he, over his shoulder, is his sword, which the handle is shaped like a cross. And she's like... Ah. So, exactly. So she sees that <laughs> and she's instantly toast. And he's just like, what happened? You know, he doesn't understand what happened. But then as soon as that happens, who comes crawling around the corner Conan? but Daddy himself? Oh. So probably Dracula or some Dracula type for the head vampire. So he's like, you killed my daughter. What did you do? So he goes after him, and uh, they have a little skirmish. And then the, the lead vampire calls upon all his minions. So out of the, out of the basement comes all. I mean, look at, look at these cool creatures and shit. They're just like, you know, they, so he calls Hell's them out. Hell's demons. Hell's demons. So all the demons of the night come out, and, of course, Drax goes to battle with them in typical Conan fashion. He starts, you know, cutting their limbs off and whatever. And then as he does away with all of them, the the lead vampire, the father, comes after him, is, is almost upon him. But then what happens? It's morning. Yeah, daylight comes. Daylight comes in. He's fried. And then Drax is like, I got to get the hell out of this place. I don't know what I stumbled upon. Ceasefire. It. He goes, but Sunlight. I'll sh it will take more than one cup of ale to drive this nightmare from my eyes, but I'll surely give it a try if the next place offers more than the stench of decay. See you next time. And there we have it. All right. So, yeah. Now, on the back is a preview of next issues from Creepy, Eerie, and Vampirella. Very colorful. Yeah, see? There we got the werewolves coming back. Person there you world. go. So, there we go. Worth clicking the like button right there. Yes, exactly. So, uh, yeah. Eerie, issue number 49 from Warren Publishing, Warren Magazine. It's a great issue. Other than the one story about the computer thing, all the others are dynamite. Really good. So, uh, and I think I bought this for like... Eight bucks, something like Enjoy. that. Enjoy. Yeah, really, really good. Okay, bang. Yeah. Bang for the buck. So, so uh, everybody watching, uh, if you're familiar with this issue, put some comments down below what you think of it. If you haven't checked it out, hopefully I've whetted your appetite enough to go out and uh, search for it because, uh, like I said, these eerie, these Warren magazines are really, really cool. If you're a horror monster fan, got to have them. Got to have them. Got to have them. They're, they're easy to find and great, great condition, right? Yeah. I mean, look at the colors are just, I mean, the spine is great. There's... Excellent, excellent. They don't seem to be abused. No, People most of the ones, I mean, you know, I have a couple that are kind of like, you know, a little questionable, but most of them are, are in good shape. They've been kept in great shape. So, whatever. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm Wild Bill saying thanks for being here, for watching another episode of Comic Book Geezers. Come on back for more stuff. We'll see you next time. Take care. I'm Pete. Have a good one. I'll see you soon on Comic Book Geezers. Bye-bye.